Good morning, everybody. Um, so it's already 11. I think that uh, we can start uh, with this webinar. So welcome to this uh, PBSite webinar. Uh, this is the second webinar of a series of three webinars on, on driving the BIPV technology to a large market deployment uh, from BIPV products to BIM modeling and applications. As in the first webinar uh, that we held yesterday, uh, today some of the PBSite project members will present you and will guide you through some of the most relevant project results. Uh, as you can see here in the, in the next slide, uh, today's webinar will focus on the PV size catalog of products and applications. We will present you the technologies developed uh, within the PV size project uh, from BIPV modules based on crystalline silicon to CIS technology and also advanced grid interface for BIPV systems. Um, before jumping into, into the agenda uh, of the webinar of today, I would like to, to introduce you to our speakers. So in the session of today, we will have uh, Thierry Dienga uh, from BID. We have also Philippe Alami from Katka Mason, Jose Maria Jimenez from Onyx Solar, Julian Peronov from Flissom, Anthony Beard from CIA, Ricardo Alonso from Tecnalia, and uh, well, myself is uh, I'm Pablo Alonso, and I will be moderating the session. As uh, per agenda of today, uh, so after this welcome session, uh, Thierry will introduce you to the portfolio of products and their applications. After this session, each of uh, the PV sites uh, technology developers will present uh, their products. And uh, the webinar will end with a presentation on virtualization of products into, into Bill Solar. At this point, I would like to, to inform the participants that you can access the, the project results as well as the presentations and recordings of uh, yesterday's webinar at pvsites.eu and also follow pvsites in social media by, by tracking the hashtag pvsites. Uh, also uh, inform the participants that you can write uh, your questions by using the questions icon uh, at the bottom of your screen and the questions might be answered during, uh, during the session uh, but will be clarified during these uh, 15 minutes of questions and answer uh, allocated at the end of the session. So having said that, I think it's, uh, it's time to start with the, with the presentation of today. I hope you enjoy this webinar. Uh, I would like to introduce you to, to our first speaker, uh, Tierk. Uh, he will introduce you to, to the portfolio of products and their applications. So Tierk, uh, you can unmute yourself right now and then the floor is yours. Okay, hello everybody. Uh, yes, yesterday we started with the catalog of products. Uh, now today, part two. Uh, there are a lot of products, so it takes some time. Um, the, we have about 10 BAPV products and two inverters. Well, the inverters will be uh, talked later about, so I don't want to talk about that. And I want to focus actually on the, the main topic. Uh, that is actually the, the whole portfolio that is uh, translated uh, into a PV sites uh, catalog that is uh, available online. It's available as a PDF book that you can download and you can print it out if you like it or see it on your screen. And of course, the, the PV sites website is all the research reports that is uh, behind actually this, uh, this uh, book and this uh, catalog. Yes, it works. Okay, this is the, the cover of the PDF. And uh, what you will see in there is uh, every product, actually, we have a data sheet that describes the product. We have a design description that describes how the design uh, of the product was actually designed into a building uh, in, in one of the demonstration buildings, the demo site buildings. And also, uh, there's a chapter about uh, uh, overview and instructions for the installation of the, of the product. Uh, well, yesterday we did already four products, so today we go to the BFPV facade cladding, a product of Onyx. It's uh, uh, applied in uh, apartment building in, uh, in Lille. Uh, this is actually an example of the data sheet, and I just go directly to the design part. You see here, this is the old apartment building before the renovation. And on the right, you see where the photovoltaic system is uh, installed. Uh, it's part of a complete uh, thermal renovation of this uh, building. So that means there is a design made by the local architect for this whole building. 
and what you can see on the on the left side is actually that he made a cladding system and there are some colorful elements uh, in between or the color is not actually known yet because he didn't decide which color it is so what you have to do is you had to make uh, the photovoltaic system fit in this this design id and so what you can see here blue is the the modules and then in between we have this uh, silver color uh, panels uh, to that that should fit to the the total renovation that uh, that is actually that was planned for this year but i'm not sure if uh, due to all the problems uh, if it's already started uh, they have this some details they made uh, actually what you see is that uh, uh, in the details is that the whole brick wall is taken off and then there was a system mounted on the on the concrete structure and every two floors, let's say every four modules, there is actually is a kind of a uh, uh, closed box. Uh, it's actually not a closed box, it's a ventilated box, but it's not one, one big uh, chimney going from, from the first floor to the top, but it's actually the maximum is the two floors. Uh, this is for fire regulation, etc. Uh, you can find all the details in the, in the final PDF, of course. Uh, look, look into the installation, you can see here that uh, they took off uh, all the bricks and then they start with a rain screen. So there was a rain screen on the, directly on the concrete. And then the rain screen, uh, we put the, the profiles in there. You can see the profiles here. And then the first, uh, we put thermal insulation in there, the mineral wool, and then all the, uh, the modules were mounted. Uh, Inside actually are two inverters with batteries. It's the system that is developed by uh, PV Sites project by uh, Tegnalia. Uh, later, Ricardo will explain this more in detail to you. The next project is actually the, the BFV glazing, the double facade that we installed in San Sebastian in one of Tegnalia's uh, uh, offices. Uh, we have two uh, banded facades, uh, and actually, uh, this is a view from the inside. Uh, when we started to discuss and to design this uh, facade, it was 2017, and we had some discussion. Uh, we should install 20, uh, 20 kilowatt peak, and we had some discussion how to do that. Uh, there were a lot of options. Uh, I just show you two options here. Uh, one option is to have uh, a very dense uh, amount of, uh, of cells. So we have, uh, you need only 48 modules of 80 cells to get you total power or to make more space in between and then you have the whole facade cladded with this uh, these modules in the first option you could keep some uh, some I, I made it red to make it more clear you could keep some uh, some windows open so on the eye side you could still have a look outside uh, not hindered by any solar cell and the other one you have to look in between the space between the, the cells uh, finally uh, the, la the second option was uh, chosen also for the, for the mounting of the system, uh, we looked for two different mounting systems. One was a Reynolds profile, so it was more or less a complete window frame system. And the other one is a more, much more simple cladding system. It's a Spanish system called the SB Fiatronis uh, clips. Uh, you can see it here in, the, in, the, in how it is added. Uh, with the clips, that's what we chose. It was a very simple system, but we need at least three support on the top and three support at the bottom so that means we need extra uh, vertical profiles to uh, to add all these clips uh, to the to the modules it also means that uh, we have extra uh, profile that is uh, that is hindering the the view to the outside but it was uh, discussed with the with the, the people and uh, nobody was really uh, complaining about that i went a little too far because i want to show you some pictures of the installation but uh, time is also running so i go to the next one this is uh, only just one picture it's at sia in uh, in france where we have this uh, uh, this cooperation between onyx and frisom uh, to make this banded glass uh, this uh, this the frisom uh, uh, solar cells uh, very nice uh, project of course it's uh, just a test bench so it's not really a commercial project yet uh, the next product is uh, actually is the same product but we we put it in two different ways. One is uh, we put it in a test bench at SIA, where we have this as a, as a skylight. Uh, what you see here is actually is glass with solar cells, and then there is a lens on top of that to uh, actually to to intensify in the in the spring and the summer the amount of uh, solar energy that comes on the cells, and this way the total 
generated power may be multiplied up to two times due to the concentrating effect of this, uh, this lens. Uh, here also we have to make some designs. Um, we have two, two test benches actually, as you can see it here. Um, I just go through there. Uh, you can see here the position of the lens and uh, here you can see it in reality. On the left side is a test uh, bench actually at the Tecnalia uh, in Spain. And on the right side is the one at uh, SIA in uh, France. And then the, another one is uh, made in Sevilla in the south of Spain, where it was uh, uh, the same module, uh, the same idea actually is, uh, is added in this test bench, in this, this test box. Uh, but here the, the lenses is actually, uh, is placed horizontal. This is the module and the lens is actually, this heart is from the inside, goes a little slow. Yeah, here you can see the lens are placed uh, horizontal because of the right angle of the, of the sunlight, of course. Um, and this also the expectation and, and uh, later, I don't have all the figures yet, but uh, it will be monitored on the moment. So all the results uh, will come out later and can be found on the, on the website. Well, that's for today. Thank you for your attention. So uh, now that uh, Derek introduced you to this portfolio of products, I think it's time that each of uh, our our product manufacturers within PV sites present uh, each of their technologies. So I would like to introduce you to, to our first uh, technology developer is Jose Maria Jimenez from Onyx Solar. So uh, Jose Maria, I'm going to, to display your, your presentation and then the floor is, is yours. So you can unmute yourself and start with the, with the presentation. Hello, good morning everyone. Uh, the sound is good? I suppose yes. So let's start. Yeah, okay, I have the control now, okay. The aim of this part of the webinar is that at the end of it, you can understand the photo, what is a photovoltaic glass, what are the main characteristics, and which type of photovoltaic glass can be used. Okay. To achieve this objectives, we will see the different photovoltaic technologies that exist, and we will show you the sample of new developments that have been carried out within the PV size projects. We will also see how to choose between the different points of different options of photovoltaic glass and it's available in the market. To start, we will see a short video that will summarize what a wind solar is. At Onyx Solar, we know that the cheapest energy is the energy that is not consumed, which is why we offer multifunction construction solutions, which can be integrated perfectly into any type of building. But what makes our solution special? Ours are multifunction solutions which combine both active and passive properties to give a great many advantages to the buildings which incorporate them. They allow for the entry of natural light, provide both thermal and sound insulation, they filter out harmful radiation, produce clean free energy thanks to solar power, and feature an innovative customized design which can be integrated perfectly into any type of building while the structure also significantly increases the comfort of its occupants by combating the noise pollution originating from outside. At Onyx Solar, we are firmly committed to innovation in all areas of our company. All of this makes up the ideal partner for incorporating photovoltaic systems into the fabric of all types of building, without compromising design and without placing limits on imagination. At Onyx Solar, we know that the cheap... As you have seen in the video, Onyx is an international company that designs, manufactures, customized photovoltaic glass for building integration. We also support architectural and engineering and construction companies for the application of these solutions, as well as real estate companies to understand the environmental and economic benefits of using integrated photovoltaic elements in buildings. And of course, always innovating. After this introduction, we are going to see the main photovoltaic technologies on the market with which Onyx works. We can distinguish two large groups of photovoltaic technologies, cell bases, 
that is the most whispered and recognizable one, and thin film technologies. The use of different technologies allows us to adapt the glass designs to the needs of the project in terms of power in relation of, to the efficiency of the technology. As you can see, the efficiency decreases uh, depending on the technology and the degree of transparency of if we use uh, color cells. In terms of transparency, depending on the cell density in the case of crystalline technologies or the transparency of the photovoltaic layer in case of amorphous silicon, and in terms of aesthetics, for example, with the use of color cells. Now we are going to see some basic contents about the glass. We can organize the different glass composition on three levels. On the first level, we find the, we find the monolithic glasses these ones. A single sheet of glass with which we, we, with which we will conform the following levels. On the second level are the laminated glasses formed from two or more monolithic glasses joined together by an encapsulated sheet. On the third level, sorry, on the third level we find the glazing that can be made of one or more glass compositions, monolithic or laminated. What are the parts of a photovoltaic glass? As this is a laminated glass, it will be composed of two glass sheets, as you can see on the picture, in which the photovoltaic cells are embedded in capsule. The junction box is the element that will allow us to extract the electricity generated by the photovoltaic glass. All the components of the photovoltaic glass can be customized using the different monolithic glasses on the market, different kind of capsules, as well as the junction box, and the possibility of incorporating this PV glass into a glacier. Therefore, we can consider photovoltaic glass as a construction material that can meet the same requirements as a conventional glass and that also generates electricity on site. The added value of the power generation offset the extra cost of the solution in comparison with the conventional material that will be used instead. It's also important to note that all the products that ONIS de develops and manufacture comply with international safety codes, standards and norms. As Tia said in the previous presentation, the crystalline technology was chosen in the PV size project. As we have seen, there are mono or crystalline opaque square cells. The efficiency of this technology is the highest, but the efficiency of the PV glass will depend on the density of the cells in the glass. The behavior of this technology depends on the direct incidence of the sunlight, and it is possible to design the PV glass with custom geometries. Below, we will see two samples of these technologies developed for the BB size project. Here, so as on the previous presentation. In, from the France demo site, we developed the prototype X5, it, that is a double laminated PV glass that was developed, whose main innovation is the, the hidden of all interconnection of the module, together with the use of a black rear glass that harmonizes homo the aesthetics. For the level of the site uh, located in Spain, we developed the prototype X6 that also is a double laminated glass, but in this case we, we use a crystalline back contact solar cells that hide the interconnections of the module. The design balances the power and the transparency as a result of its application as an stereo cladion on the system windows of the building. In both cases, the use of these solutions involves improvements on the saving effort, the reduction of cooling and heating needs, on-site generation of energy, improved aesthetics on the building, increase of the added value of the building, and of course, and a return on the investment. We have seen two examples of customization of photovoltaic solutions, but ONIS also have solutions with other technologies and standard dimensions with different variants as you can see in this picture. So, to select a PV glass, what should you consider? Well, there are three basic fields in, in decision-making, performance, aesthetics, and finance. 
depending on the weight of each of these fields within the project, our technical team will advise you with solutions uh, which solutions are more appropriate to implement in your project. In the case of the performance, the main as uh, aspect to take in account will be uh, where, is location, where, where is located the project, the solar irradiation that we can uh, collect, and which kind of application we are uh, looking for, for a curtain wall, a skylight, canopy, railway, etc. And also, how many the score meters we will have for installed this PV glass. Regarding the aesthetics, uh, what type of aesthetic uh, we are looking, to, uh, you are looking for? More homogeneous, or maybe colors, or other kind of uh, com or other kind of customizations. Well, I want to finish this part of the webinar remarking that all the products sold are available on the market. You can contact us through our website, onyxsolar.com, <coughs> and even seek help locally through our international network of accredited distributors and installers. You can find all this info in our website. So this is all. Thanks for your attention. Thank you so much, uh, Chema, for the presentation. Uh, indeed, uh, yes, I want to inform the, the participants that uh, within PV sites, we have already kind of, uh, we did, uh, or there is already some commercial installations done with uh, with uh, honest products, also pleasant products. And this uh, this is called by us, uh, it's called as success histories, uh, PV site success histories, and you can, uh, you can uh, read them in the, in the project website. So you can go there. And have a look in which kind of uh, installations, uh, commercial installations, uh, how the products developed by which PV site has been installed. So thanks, uh, thanks again, Chema. Um, I think uh, now we move forward uh, with uh, this uh, presentation. So I'm gonna display this presentation and then uh, let me see if okay, good. So I guess it's, it's time now to introduce you to Julian Perno. Uh, Julian, uh, the floor is, is yours. Thank you. Can you confirm that you hear me? Yes, I, I can hear you well. Thank you. So thank you for giving me the opportunity to present here some information. I want to quickly uh, introduce Fleesome and what Fleesome can offer and then show again uh, the products quickly. You have already seen them. Um, I, yeah, it works. I clicked a bit too quickly. So, yeah, perfect. So Fleesome was founded in 2005 based on flexible uh, solar technology. And we are offering products for buildings, for mobility, cars, trucks, and also trains, for aerospace due to the extremely light weight that we can offer, and also for special project where we can integrate our solar film in ways that are not possible with uh, crystalline technologies. Yeah, sorry, it takes some time to change the slide. So we want to change the way the world uses energy. We want to cover every surface and produce the electricity at the place where it is, is needed. So especially on, on trucks and cars and buses and trains that are off grid. This is actually something where we can really offer. Also in the building integration, as you see here, this is a protected building where with our solar film, you can cover the building without compromising its aesthetics and follow really the, the shape of the, of the building. That is, is what we can offer. So it takes, like when I click, 
otherwise about two minutes uh, to uh, many seconds okay quickly our main technology is solar film so we start with a one kilometer long roll of polymid plastic we coat it with metals and mainly with the CIGS semiconductor layer this is called absorber here and this is sandwiched between the metal and the uh, front contact to form a solar film and this solar film can then be integrated in all kind of, of application so the thickness of the film including the substrate is only 28 micron so it's extremely flexible and versatile to use and in pv sites we have done several applications where we can integrate it into building skins roofs and facades So basically we have two products um, that, that you can make out of it. Two standard products, is, it's a flex where we have all this polymeric back sheet. This is really rollable or we can have it on a metal, give it some, some uh, stiffness to have a very lightweight sheet that, but that is self-supporting and can be used as part of, of the building. So here, these are the PV sites products that we have and created all together you have seen them before most of them so this was the facade very similar product can also be put on a roof to directly form the roof on a carport we have demonstrated a curved metal um, metal uh, solar module that forms directly the roof Number one is an, an example of where our modules were glued directly to metal panels. That's a very lightweight solution. So we provide modules with the glue included. So you have to just peel and stick to mount it. Number three is an industrial roof where we designed a module to the um, correct shape of the, the roof that you can directly screw it on the roof. So this is, these are the two facade solutions. Like one is a hang-in aluminum panel and the other is a peel and stick solution. In both cases, it's important that it's very lightweight. You have about two kilogram per square meter, which is a fraction of, of what you have if you use glass. And in many applications, weight is important on the facade, not to have it too heavy. You can save on the installation. And the, the roof tile, there of course you have just one roof you don't need an extra roof extra roof and it's also from the installation point of view it, it can be beneficial now this first prototype there was some development with all the the wood below but this is also an aesthetically very nice solution for for a single house building and you can nicely use up all the surface you have So these are the dimensions of the tile we, we produce then. This can also be customized. So we're having now this product, maybe we have more in the future with, with different lengths. At some point it gets too big for the installer to handle. At some point it's too small. You have too many junction boxes. So we think this is the sweet spot, but it can still be adjusted. For the carport, as I said, this is a metal module which is still bendable so it is flexible enough to to give this nice shape but it's also strong enough to to be the roof and this is also following this regulations for for switzerland where you have to support a lot of uh, snow weight and also the wind load is quite high so it's, it's a robust const, um, construction with steel but it we think it looks not like a robust it looks like a light um nice construction so i think this is aesthetically quite a nice solution uh, just to mention the curvature actually is important for the stiffness of the, of the roof it gives a lot of stability to have it curved not flat so here the production of this roof i want to sh show you here one thing if you look in april wherever the sun was still flat and we had very good weather this year you can see a lot more production 
and this is due to this uh, aluminium facade in the back. So we have a lot of reflection coming here to these modules that are actually bent towards the building. So here we have a, a very good situation where we can profit from, from uh, surrounding light. Sorry. This is, sorry, it started already. This is a short clip showing how this cardboard is built up, how this installation works to give you an impression. Sorry. It doesn't work when I click. I changed the slides. You can see how the modules are just really great. They are off. They are pushed down and then directly clamped together. Pretty simple way of installing. So we have basically no extra cost. The carport without solar is, is the same to install. So you have basically no extra installation costs here. And this is the, the result of, this, of the first carport we built. We built two of them in the PV sites and we have already an order for more outside PV sites. So this seems to be a successful product that people like. So yeah, it switched already, sorry. This uh, slides, I don't have them perfectly under control. Um, here we have an example of, of a peel and stick where the modules can actually be used to renovate a roof without changing its aesthetics and the aesthetics of the building. And not, no need to put any screws. And this is the roof tile for industrial roofs where the width of the tile fits exactly to the roof. So it can be just um, screwed to the roof directly without a subconstruction. And this is the result. The space between the modules was done due to aesthetical reasons and that you can access them later on. So this is not optimized for maximum energy production. Okay, this was the last slide. Thank you. Thank you for your attention. Thanks a lot. Thank you, uh, Julian. Uh, thank you so much for the presentation. Uh, like uh, like the videos actually from the carport and from, from Kikusa roof. Uh, I've been informed that uh, well, there is some maybe something to be fixed uh, on the the display of the presentation so let me let me try to fix it while i'm, I'm talking right now one second in the meantime i've seen also that uh, some of the some of the participants are already doing some questions so yeah just uh, i remind you that uh, it might be that uh, for instance uh, that we answered them uh, during the session, but uh, we will clarify this better at the end of at the end of the session during this uh, 15 minutes of questions and answers. So one second, I'm trying to fix uh, the problem. I've been informed. Okay, I, I guess uh, second. I 
guess now is uh, working better. Apologies in advance for, for this. Uh, for this issue. Okay, uh, thanks Julian again. Uh, now we move forward to to, to the presentation of uh, CIA, Anthony, Anthony Beer, who is going to present the prototype inverter. Uh, so, uh, Anthony, uh, whenever you're ready, you can unmute yourself and, and the floor is yours. Thank you, Pablo. So, uh, uh, good morning, everyone. I am Anthony Beer from uh, CIA. I will present you here the converter. In fact, this is an inverter that we developed in the frame of the PVSI project. So if we move to the next slide. Are you able to do it? Uh, yes, I, it seems to take time. I don't know. Otherwise I will I will move it for you. It doesn't let me know. Tell yes, me. If, if you can do it maybe. Oh, sorry, yesterday we did not have any, any problem and today we are just struggling a bit, so I'm sorry for that. I'm trying to fix it again, so I'm so sorry. Okay. I don't know why it's not working. The I cannot uh, I cannot move the slide. Yes, now uh, now it's working. So Anthony, I give you the power again, so you can start. Okay, thank you, it works now. Thank you. So uh, this is a photograph of, the, of the, our inverter that we developed. In fact, this is a current source inverter. It's connected to the three phase uh, grid. The power is five kilowatts. Uh, the maximum PV voltage is 400 volt. Uh, it works so on the three phase 450 uh, hertz uh, grid. The switching frequency is 125 kilohertz and the maximum maximum efficiency is about 98%. So um, if I move to the next slide. Okay, it works. So this is a view of the design of the of the inverter. What we can see here is a uh, printed circuit board that is inside the, the, the package of the inverter. On the left, you can see the top side with the surface mounted component with the switching cell, power supply, the drivers, the measuring channel, and also we have the DC chokes. On the right, this is the bottom side of the printed circuit board with the through old mounted component uh, like uh, differential and common mode filtering. We do this with uh, inductor and capacitor. In fact, uh, we have the relays, the residual current monitoring unit, and also we see the heat sink who will be uh, outside of the, of the inverter. So here uh, we have the enclosure. On the front, this is in fact a metallic cabinet with a key locked door. Uh, we have on this uh, door, the human to machine interface with a LCD screen and also a push button uh, for controlling the, the, in fact, the, the display. And we also have on the bottom side, the holes for cable connection, like for AC and DC cable. I will uh, explain you in another slide. And on the back side, we can see the heatsink, which is uh, on which the printed circuit board is fixed. And we also see the fixture of the system for the wall mounting. Uh, here is just a bill of material and the repartition of the cost of uh, this type of inverter. And uh, the main part of the cost is on the silicon carbide uh, semiconductor, 
on the on and their driver, but also on EMI filtering. Uh, that is a DC uh, and AC uh, inductor, a DC and AC uh, capacitor uh, for common mode and also differential, differential mode. So uh, what uh, to conclude, in fact, the cost per watt is about 10 cents. Uh, here you can see the DC and AC cable connection. So uh, we must connect uh, five wire uh, three phase uh, AC uh, cable with the three phases, the neutral and the earth, and we also two cable for the DC plus and minus from uh, from PV generator. Uh, here, where we you can see some uh, test results. This is the result of the test we made for normal operation. So if we look here, we have uh, the waveform, electrical waveform. Uh, so in, on the top, you see a sinuous zodoidal yellow waveform. This is the grid voltage. Uh, in blue, this, we have the grid current. So we can see that uh, we don't have, uh, we have a very uh, little THD, the harmonic distortion. Uh, we are in phase with the voltage. Uh, in purple, this is a PV voltage, and in grid, the uh, PV current. Okay, on the bottom part of this slide, what is also important to, to, to see is how we control the switches. So we have 12 twist switches, and they must be controlled with pulse. So here we have just have a, a view uh, according to the, to the voltage phase and angle of how are uh, generated these pulses. Okay, we also make some uh, test of the thermal behavior of the of the device. So here we have a photograph of a view taken from the thermal camera, and what it's also important is to check that uh, after some hour of uh, working, we don't have too much uh, heat because in this case, we will have some failure. So in this example, we see that the, the switches, the semiconductor switches based on silicon carbide uh, works at about 100 degrees. Uh, in this example, the, the ambient temperature is about 28 degrees and the temperature of the heat sink, which is uh, the uh, behind the, the inverter is uh, about 70 degrees. We also make some uh, efficiency uh, characterization. So what uh, what we see here, we see here that the maximum efficiency we can obtain is about 98%, but we also have to calculate according to the European standard, the weighted efficiency according to operand Operan uh, weight is the Californian California weight. And in fact, uh, we see that Operan efficiency is about uh, 97% according, in fact, to the voltage of the PV. So the higher is the PV voltage, higher will be the efficiency. And also for the Californian efficiency, we are about 97% when VPV, the PV voltage is low and about 97.5% uh, when P voltage is higher. Okay, so uh, that's all for the presentation of uh, this inverter. You, you may ask question uh, if you have, and uh, thank for your attention. Thank you so much, Anthony. Uh, yes, uh, I also invite you to, to write your questions. Uh, I'm going to right now to change the presentation. Uh, one second. I hope this uh, works well because we are having today a bit of uh, problems. Good morning. So now it's, it's time to, to introduce you our next uh, speaker and our last uh, technology developer uh, of this, uh, this second part of the, of the webinar. So I would like to introduce you Ricardo Alonso. He will do this presentation on the PV storage inverter. So Ricardo, uh, whenever you are ready, the floor is yours. Thank you, Pablo. Uh, I am seeing the not the full screen of the PPT. You cannot see, or no, I, I have. I am seeing the the PPT, but not in full screen. The... Okay. Strange. One second. So 
No, thank you. Let's check. Okay, okay perfect. It works. Thank you, Pablo. Uh, good morning, everyone. I'm going to, to explain the PV storage inverter that we have developed in, uh, in PV Sites project. Uh, for those who don't know us, uh, please let me introduce very briefly Tecnalia. Tecnalia is uh, the largest private research center in Spain, and our aim is to develop technologies, products, and services that uh, can be finally transferred to industrial partners for their uh, commercial exploitation as is the, the case in, in this project with the PV storage inverter. Okay. okay, the PV storage inverter um, or hybrid inverter um, receives this, this name um, because it combines in the same uh, device an input for the by PV generator and also an input for uh, an electrical storage battery pack. This is very interesting for those applications where we are interested in increasing cell consumption ratio, the, the amount of energy that we are going to, to, to cell consume in, in the building, and also in order to, to reduce the impact of the BIPD in, in, into the grids, because uh, all, the, all the energy that is uh, consumed uh, inside the, the building, it will uh, ease the operation and planning of the AC grids. So, um, the main advantages of this uh, new device is that uh, we are uh, combining these two inputs and we uh, connect them directly through a high voltage DC link. This means that we avoid to, to use the grid uh, in order to, to charge the batteries from the BIPV, as uh, this would be the case uh, if we had a PV inverter, an additional inverter for the storage. So this, this way we avoid these conversion losses and we increase the efficiency of the, of the system. Uh, regarding the voltage ranges, uh, you can see that uh, for the BIPV generator, our MPPT voltage range is from 200 volts to 800 volts. Uh, this is quite important because the uh, PV strength in these kind of applications could reach up to uh, 1000 volts, in fact. Uh, in, in fact, uh, the absolute maximum rating at the input of the PV is 1000 volts, but the, the MPPT range is from 200 to 800. To 800. Uh, this is also important not only for the flexibility in the design of the PV system, but we, as we are going to see later, uh, in this kind of system, we could have uh, the maximum power point voltage at the lower voltage than the nominal uh, when we design the system. Mm, similarly, in the battery pack input, we have an input voltage range from 250 to 700 volts. Although the, the most interesting uh, for, with this inverter is to, to work with high voltage uh, battery packs in order to, to reduce the conversion uses. And finally, we, or the output is also, as in the case we have seen with the inverter, uh, is a free phase uh, AC grid of uh, for uh, 100 volts line to line and 50 hertz. So, as uh, I have said, the, the main advantage is the, these uh, high conversion efficiencies, uh, especially when we work from PV to battery, charging the, the storage. As you can see in the figures, uh, we, we have a high efficiency, conversion efficiency from 20% uh, of uh, the nominal power. Uh, we, we have uh, efficiencies above uh, 96 uh, in the case of the from PV to battery and 95 above 95 from PV to grid and battery to grid. Independently from the input voltage we are working with. And also the European efficiency is, is quite good. Uh, with values above uh, 96 in the case of PV to battery and uh, 90, 95 in the case of PV to grid and battery to grid. But uh, when working with PV, it's not only important the, the conversion efficiency, but also the MPPT efficiency. That means the power that we are able to extract from the PV generator uh, in comparison with the available power in this PV generator. 
for this purpose, there are uh, a standard that measures the static and dynamic MPPT efficiencies. As you can see in the, in the figures, we are above 99.9 .9 in all the cases of, uh, that the, the, the standard uh, regulates. So it's uh, very good uh, efficiency. But in the case of IPV, apart from the, the profiles that the standard uh, states, there are other questions that we have to take into account. Uh, as you know, as you probably know, in, in BIPV systems, uh, one of the main issues is that not all the PV modules work at the same working conditions. That means that, that there can appear um, uh, shadows, uh, there can be shadows or um, partial uh, different inclination orientation of the PV modules. And this makes that the IV curve of the whole stream is uh, like the one in the top uh, left, the, the green line. This is the IV curve of a PV stream with uh, mismatching, uh, with different uh, working conditions in the PV modules. And the red line is the, the power output of the PV stream. As you can see, there are local maximum power points. So the, the device must be able to cope with this, with this kind of uh, uh, curves. We have uh, implemented a global maximum power point that is very reliable and very efficient in order to get the global maximum power point. But uh, another option in order to, to cope with this kind of mismatching uh, that you probably know is the power optimizers. But this consists of integrating a DC DC converter in each PV module, extracting the maximum power for the PV for the PV panel. This ideally uh, solves the problem of this matching, but this is not um, exactly true. Uh, as you can see in the figure on the bottom left, you can see that the IV curve of, of the PV stream with power optimizer is also or can be also uh, present in different uh, local power points or, or, or local power regions. And for this kind of IV curves, our inverter is also equipped with uh, a special, a particular MPPT that we have called MPRT maximum power region tracking that is able to, to find the, 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 the best voltage at, it, at each moment to extract the maximum power with the power optimizers. Also. Of course, uh, our inverter complies with all the, uh, all the grid codes uh, in, in, at the European level. This means that uh, it uh, works with the maximum and minimum variation in grid voltage and frequencies state in, in Europe. Uh, it uh, regulates active and reactive power according to the standards uh, and also it presents a very high quality output signal, very low THD, very low voltage fluctuation on flicker, low direct current injection and also it uh, complies with the requirements regarding its landing prevention or low voltage drive through. This also, the, 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 all, all these standards have been tested in our laboratories. Uh, okay, so far we have seen all the primary functionalities of the PV storage inverter, but um, as important as, as these ones are, is the, the possibility to control this PV inverter, this PV storage inverter in order to, to, charge, to charge and discharge the battery according to the needs of the building. And for this purpose, we need an external energy management system that is the building energy management system that take into account not only the PV generation and, and the storage uh, capacity, but also all the all the consumption of the building and even the, um, the potential flexible loads that we can control in the building. For that purpose, this device is provides an interface, an open protocol uh, based on the Sun spec uh, Modbus protocol that is possible that you you know uh, in order to to allow this, this remote controllability. In PV sites project, for instance, we have developed a, a predictive energy management strategy that forecast the production, the PV production, and also the building consumption for the next 24 hours. And with this anticipated knowledge of the energy performance of the building, we are able to, to optimize, for instance, the self consumption. Uh, you can see in the figure in, in, on the top is the conventional uh, energy management strategy and in, on, the, on, the, on the bottom is the, the energy management strategy with PV sites. Um, we, instead of discharge 
the battery as soon as we we have uh, less production than consumption, we wait for the uh, moment with uh, higher tariffs in the from the grid with the purchase tariff higher in order to get most uh, the, the, get the most from the store uh, PV excess in the batteries. On the other hand, this uh, anticipated knowledge of the of the performance of the building will allow to, for instance, in case we have a sunny day that we are going to fully charge the batteries, instead of uh, charging the batteries at the beginning in the in the first hours of the day uh, at the high power rates, we we can uh, make a soft charge of the batteries at, and, until uh, full charge, but uh, taking care of uh, the storage and this way extending the, the lifetime of these batteries. And finally, for instance, we, we can uh, also to, to, to get peak saving. That means that uh, if we state uh, a contracted power lower than the real consumption peaks we have, uh, we could uh, charge the batteries at uh, during the night, for instance, at a low, at low uh, purchase tariffs in order to, 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 co to, to cover these, these consumption peaks. All these um, possibilities will improve the, the performance of the system and the, the profitability of, of the whole system. But uh, normally, uh, the, the typical question is, okay, how much storage capacity is, is worthwhile in, in my case? Well, for this purpose, we have also developed a software tool that uh, will allow us to, to run energy simulations for a whole year and to evaluate the energy, the main energy and economic uh, performance indicators in order to select the best option in terms of uh, by PV capacity, energy strategy and storage capacity. Uh, only we need uh, as an input uh, the, the consumption profile of, of the building uh, that we can, for instance, download from the, the current smart meters and the PV potential. That means the solar resource that we, we, we have in this location that uh, can be also downloaded from database with the typical meteorological years. So this way we can make the best decision in terms of profitability of our system. Okay, and to conclude, uh, um, a few words uh, uh, about uh, where, where we are. We have validated this in, in PV site projects into demo sites as uh, we have seen before in, in, in France in the multi dwelling uh, building with uh, crist uh, silicon crystal, crystalline silicon um, technology with two uh, P inverters for the whole facet. This way, we have also demonstrated the scalability of the system that we can connect P inverters in parallel if we need uh, more storage capacity and by PV capacity. And on, on the right, uh, you, you have the single family house in Belgium that uh, with CIG's technology that uh, we have also validated there our inverter. And now the idea is to, as I have said at the beginning, Technalia is not a, a, co a, a commercial um, company. Uh, we transfer this technology to a Spanish manufacturer called Elson Electronica that is uh, nowadays uh, working on the industrialization of the product. And they are reducing the, the size and the weight and uh, giving a more attractive outlook, as you can see in the image. And the idea is to also to reduce the, the cost and the target price is 1,600 euros for the 10 kilowatts uh, inverter. And this is the, the point where, where we are now. Okay, so this is all from my side. Thank you very much for your attention and please post your question on the, on the section in, in order to answer at the end of the session. Thank you so much, uh, Ricardo. Uh, congratulations as well for this uh, commercial achievement. So it's, uh, say it's also kind of a, a success history as well for, for PV sites. So, yes, uh, we are moving uh, now to the, the last session of the, of the webinar about the virtualization of products into Team Solar. You, so, we, you have already an idea of the PVSite product. Now, uh, our colleague uh, Philippe will introduce you 
to this virtualization of products into, into the solar. So um, let me just display the, the presentation and then the floor is, is, is yours. Good morning all, good morning Pablo, thank you. Let's uh, skip now into the virtual world with um, sharing our experience with the uh, virtualization, digitization of uh, these products and their application, of course. I'm Philip from Mocat Commission, uh, BIPB consultant and uh, consultant in also in BIM and development, digital development. Uh, what, why did we join this project and what is the objective of our meeting today? Well, and the equation PV sites plus calculation makes sense is because it's about uh, digitization and uh, BIM, building information modeling to produce the very first, I guess, BIPV e catalog to be produced and um, shared and distributed within the BIM industry and the BIM world. Maybe some of you don't know uh exactly what is beam but this is another story but beam uh is common today in the building uh, digital industry about uh, the, the background for cat commission uh cat commission uh, is a swiss company based in near geneva and um, has been always focused on the product life cycle uh stories and the management from design to end of life and uh, turn to the building industry, taking the challenge of BIM, with these, which is parallel with uh, the manufacturing industry. Uh, speaking, uh, of course, uh, of build, operate, maintain, and design. Design first, uh, of, of course. So today, CAT Commission is uh, um, in the, the Arcan System Group and uh, is partly researcher and developer and partly reseller and distributor of uh, Autodesk solutions. Besides, uh, is for us a good challenge because we are able to merge building integration. This is BIM, solar simulation. This is uh, digitization of uh, solar technologies. And uh, BIPV products, this is digitization of materials and replacement of building materials by uh, active materials. This is a true BIM story, building information modeling from design to operation within a digital process. Uh, today's meeting purpose is to present our work, open perspective with uh, the next webinars and tomorrow webinar will present the software themselves one software but also connection to the BIM software and foster BIM innovation for BIPV. Our challenge was to develop a software tool uh, integrating element level to building level data, 3D modeling, representation of object, representation of facade roofs to produce uh, commercial assets and to be distributed from pre-design to building operation. It's a long story. We started this on the base baseline of BIM Solar existing software, uh, previously developed with European projects. And the story will continue through sister projects like BIPV Boost. And the solution for PV sites is an accurate user-friendly integrative software tool and also platform for BIPV products to uh, embed performance into this digital workflow, digital workplace also. Uh, what is the PV site catalog today? A link to BIM Solar and uh, always BIM ready. This is very important for the market. And what is the role of BIM for BIPV products? The PV site e-catalog uh, is the very first uh, catalog of virtual products, typical BIPV from BIPV design to BIM elements. And I will present it. The genesis of this contextual design of course, is always architectural and, and concerning materials, as you know, and as you seen before, as you've seen before, um, we are talking about materials, integration of materials, and uh, and adequacy between uh, performance of element level and um, on on the building shape, on the building skin, and global performance, overall performance of the building itself. So, the challenge is 
co it's combined material from uh, a low level of details, low level of information to high level of information. This is the BIP process combined with the BIM process. BIM is also like an iceberg. Um, of course, 3D, yeah. the 3D visualization, the 3D work, 3D modeling, software training, coordination, of course, is um, the emerging part of the iceberg, but the hidden part is more interesting for us and was more interesting for us in this project because it's a question of, of thermal analysis with data, lighting analysis, structural analysis, constructability, and mainly prefabrication of, of course, of um, materials like models. So the hidden part is, uh, of, of course, our concern to deliver, to deliver services and beam uh, objects. The inspiration from reality is also the source of uh, our work. I took the example of um, a sister project, BIPV Boost, um, from Schreiser uh, Company, a partner. Uh, this explains to you the difficulty of uh, integrate in uh, with with digital tools every component every uh, difficulty every issue of uh, models for example into a roof how can we turn this into collaborative workflow how can we link the the object and make the object uh, dynamic to um, couple and exchange parameters. This, this is inspiration and this is our workflow uh, presented before, but uh, the main workflow for us is to be able to produce uh, digital products, digital version of the real products from pre-design to uh, construction and the building operation, any kind of product. So the pre-design e-products, that I call e-products, uh, concern visualization and parametrics. We've got six models, six types of models uh, from uh, Flexum and Onyx Solar and two uh, PV site inverters from uh, CEA and uh, from Technalia. The design process starts always virtually with a datasheet as the main source. As you can see, this is the example of the Flexum e roof tile. Then beam solar modeling, the dedicated beam solar tool can exploit the data sheet to create objects into a virtual workspace. And this is the very starting um, point because we have a lot of flexibility. We can change colors, we can change dimension, we can, uh, of course, um, put uh, any kind of parameter we decide with the manufacturer from datasheet. Then we have to fine tune, of course, because as you know, for BIPV, there are a lot of versions, a lot of changes in the dimension, redimensioning, and you can see this is the real story for PV sites. We change dimension, but of course, into the software, we adapted every time, every step, every iteration was adaptation of our configuration of objects. And of course, the architectural work is very important because you have to anticipate the inclusion of a tile, for instance, into a roof. Then the full beam story ends with the beam readiness, it means for CAD commission, Autodesk Revit families, creation of, of products, richer products, full parametric. And this is the way of opening the BIPV uh, niche market to the global market of um, the beam industry because you go beam everywhere for every kind of project today in the world of construction. So the result is always a beam object for Revit today and this is the deliverable for each family of product for PV sites. And you can see on the picture below the integration of the e-roof tile into the, the roof, the virtual roof for uh, the 3D building virtually also. Uh, we, we're gonna review uh, product by product quickly uh, what we, we've made and what will be delivered uh, next as a database of comprehensive uh, solutions, beam solution and beam solar solution. First, face some thin film CIGS models. You can see um, the cladding wall for uh, Ecole Hôtelier de Genève. This is a Revit family and a Revit wall. We started uh, with uh, the first product, uh, e-roof tile. 
then the the carport uh, so I'm sorry but some pictures are missing there may be a bug in the presentation then the facade then uh, industrial roof what we, we call uh, e roof and then uh, the the e catalog is the way for us to deliver these objects to the um, to the market because of course the uh, building of virtual objects is not enough for users of uh, digital tools you need to be able to understand the way to use them to understand the story and then to download and to embed these objects in your virtual workspace uh, compatible with your software your design and the construction software so we created we created the um, the comprehensive uh, e-catalog online and we, this will be delivered next on the um, on the web uh, on the web page about tonic solar products uh, we also developed the transparent and glaze, uh, glazing systems from Onyx Solar with uh, the PV sites X5 um, uh, C, crystalline silicon, sorry, glazed products with hidden boost bars and L interconnections. Uh, the X6 glass gas products with back contact uh, crystalline silicon cells. So you can see. Uh, what is what was missing sorry uh, in the presentation uh, in the previous sites i don't know why uh, you've got on the left the bipv model editor configurator into the simulation calculation software beam solar you can see the rendering within the simulation workspace transparency cells below you can see the transformation into a beam object beam ready for autodesk revit and then for the storefront, the, the official PV site e catalog, you can see what you will be able, able to get from the 1st of July as the X6 uh, C crystalline silicon glass by Unix Solar uh, with a lot of information, of course. Um, this is a bug, I don't know why. Uh, this is uh, the application, of course, of this kind of um, objects. This is the, re the real world, but the virtual world will be able in the future with uh, the use of catalog to anticipate this kind of uh, real construction. What about inverters? We have two inverters, the CS, CS, um, uh, silicium carbide um, inverter and the Technalia DC coupled charge inverter. We don't need, at the moment, we didn't need uh, for PV sites the 3D representation of the inverters because the, of course, the focus was put on the on the building skin. So we virtualized uh, each of one each one of the inverters as um, a configurator of of data uh, that you can see uh, coupled with the, the simulation world. And uh, you can see that uh, if you uh, anticipate uh, the, the settings of um, uh, the inverter, you can be able, um, on one hand, to provide the good parameters, the right parameter from data sheet, the main parameters to the virtual object, and then to uh, couple the, um, the electrical models and uh, also losses generation like mismatching and the, the MPPT, global MPPT performance. Uh, this coupled with um, the virtual building. You can see the strings and they, are, they reflect the reality of stringing the, um, the roof uh, for the, the Demo1 uh, project. We will speak a little bit more of how uh, to get into this performance tomorrow with the use of the software itself but even the, uh, the cables are able to be uh, set up as you can see on, on the picture and this is the way of producing the virtuality of the inverters they are not beam objects um, today but in the future we will of course be in line with the electrical uh, engineering needs for the um, 
the mechanical, electrical, and plumbing uh, models of the, the main beam solutions. About the use of the e products, as you can, as, uh, as you know, there are um, from, sorry, six sites and seven uh, demonstrators. I will go very fast through through this. First was the um, FD, the single family house, FD2 house. So uh, the tile and the inverter was were integrated as virtual objects, and you can see the result. Uh, the beam result is, of course, integration of uh, a tile into the roof. The real uh, effect, of course, is here. Second is educational building, Ecole Atelier de Genève. You can see the virtual uh, world and simulation works together with uh, uh, virtual objects and beam objects. Third, carports, uh, Zurich, uh, ENPA and EKZ. They were designed in 3D uh, with 3D models from architect. And then we invented the very first uh, bended uh, models for simulation and also uh, to provide to the beam uh, uh, industry. This is the real result. Uh, fourth, a industrial building uh, with the specific uh, in integrated um, panels for, for this kind of roof. You can see simulation, irradiance simulation, mapping of uh, the irradiance, and then uh, inclusion of uh, the virtual models into the real, um, the virtual also uh, roof, and the, um, the real result. Uh, five is uh, apartment building, uh, a facade, ventilated facade with insulation, future insulation. So you can see uh, simulation works, mapping of losses uh, on the, at model level, and the, the creation of the, um, the virtual model. And the result, of course, and the last one is a um, technology office building, two facades with uh, transparent models. So you can see the virtual uh, representation of the objects and the, the integration for simulation purposes and performance. And the re real result. In conclusion, we put um, our main efforts to virtualize the products, to embed uh, the main data to create this collaborative digital workspace for design simulation cal calculation, exchanging data in a what-if analysis and step-by-step, step-by-step, anticipating also the beam readiness from element level to building level, because these data are, um, are of course, checked at each uh, step of uh, a design process, then are transformed into a, a beam object, and this beam object is ready to integrate um, a database. And the, the database, um, the last point, is a web platform uh, embedded into a web platform to be able for users, for um, software users, to retrieve every digital asset developed within the PV site uh, project. This will be a, um, distributed through the web platform called the Beam Solar. Um, coupling software, uh, simulation software, design software, and the uh, web workspace, and the public release will be made 1st of July. Um, and I think it's the end for my presentation. Thank you so much, Philippe, uh, for the next presentation. Okay, so with this presentation, indeed, um, we have finalized uh, the round of presentations. So, uh, yes. So now we, we have a bit of time to answer some of the questions. I have seen already that uh, that uh, some of the questions uh, we have received some questions uh, here. So I will I will go um, by order. So one of the participants indeed is, is asking, uh, is asking this one, uh, uh, what is the expected lifetime of the adhesive for the peel and the stick modules uh, for Clisson? And then uh, he's also asking, is it mean for a long ser uh, service life or as a short uh, term solution? So Julian, uh, I would like to give you the, the, the possibility to answer this question. 
this product is designed for 20 years. We have on the roof, we have already um, several installations. On the facade, we have so far two. And there is, if you're, if you're in a climate where it is freezing often, the question is if there could be water behind the module and it could um, detach after some years. So this is still not 100% sure. So we cannot give give 20 years warranty on the facade gluing, but I personally think it works for 20 years, but we have not yet, no yet 20 years uh, proof, proof of the facade mounting of the peel and stick. Okay, uh, thanks Julian. Uh... Yes, uh, next question indeed uh, goes to, to Ternalia, to Ricardo. And uh, uh, one, one participant is asking if you do, do you have a method uh, for the building demand estimation even for the before the building construction? This would yeah, be thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Pablo. Uh, not directly us, um, uh, but we are now working with an energy service company. Uh, to whom we have a license licensed this war tool and uh, the for the planning of the of the storage capacity and PV capacity and they are uh, trying to develop uh, data analytics in order to clusterize uh, to, to uh, clusterization of their of their consumption their consumers uh, profiles so we, in terms of uh, to have consumption profile for the different typologies of uh, consumers they, they have. They, they have a large amount of, of data from their, uh, so in, for, for those uh, consumers that they don't have data, they can uh, estimate a profile according to their cluster. Uh, this means uh, depends on the location, depends on the contracted power, depending on the, on the, on the typology, if it's a residential consumer or, or consumer or is um, um, industrial or uh, service uh, building or whatever. So uh, there are ways to do that, but we, we, we haven't developed these, these data analytics uh, because we, uh, among other reasons, we don't have the, the data to, to do that. And uh, well, uh, Pablo, if you, Yes, there is, there is another question related to this. Uh, it's the, if it is the, the software that you mentioned in the presentation is commercial already, and uh, if it is, if where it where can be downloaded? No, no at the moment. Uh, as I have said, we have licensed this software to different to two Spanish Escos energy service companies and one installer. Uh, for their uh, commercial use, and uh, in but they are not offering this software. Uh, uh, for the final customer they use for the design and and their uh, planning operation planning and uh, but in any case the idea is to include this kind of uh, simulation also in the in beam solar i think uh, with uh, in, in coordination with the uh, cast commission so the idea is once we have included this in, in this software package uh, the the users will have access to this commercial uh, software in order to, to run their, their own simulations by themselves. Thanks, uh, Ricardo. Um, uh, we have time for uh, yeah, two or three more questions. So I have a question already. I have a question here for Onyx Solar. Uh, uh, one, uh, one participant is asking what were the major challenges uh, for hiding the metallic ribbons for Onyx Solar? And then did you tested many different ways of doing it? Um, so yeah, Chema, if you would like to, to answer this question, uh, so also the other participants can uh, can uh, can know about it. Can you hear me? Yes. Ah, yeah. Okay. Yes. Uh, of course, we tested many different ways of doing it, but uh, and the maintenance as a uh, post uh, was uh, that all the process is uh, fully manual. And on the other hand, uh, we need to find materials compatible with the soldering of the cell strings and the lamination process. 
and uh, also uh, this same uh, the same participant is asking that did you or did you also mask the small ribbons uh, on top of the solar cell? Uh, yeah, he had some doubts with this. So. Yeah, I, I want to to point out that uh, uh, on the French demo case, we we don't cover this uh, this uh, this ribbons the the boost bar. Uh, due to, uh, to the final results uh, was not uh, as well as good as expected and uh, at the end this this final prototypes uh, don't have this part of the module cover and on the other hand uh, for the Spanish demo site uh, th this this um, these uh, ribbons are not uh, are not present in on the cells due to the cells are have a uh, I am um, about contact cells. So, uh, on the case of the uh, of uh, the Spain, um, we don't don't have these these uh, elements on the cells. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, then uh, I think one last question is uh, uh, I I think it's addressed to to Philip. Uh, the question from one of the speakers is: uh, Can PV sites uh, evaluate 3D complex surfaces such as roof and five passenger vehicle surfaces, cars, or is limited uh, to cylindrical uh, surfaces as the car population? Sorry, yes, I answer just right now. Yes, we use the ray tracing technology to distribute the radiance on 3D, in 3D on every surface, volume, etc. So, if you uh, provide a 3D modeling architecture or technical of your environment, and then uh, you set the level of detail for simulation for the software. So you can uh, simulate a very high level detail of models, shading elements, uh, roofs, facade. So you get the a high accuracy uh, shading uh, losses, for instance, on the models. So this is good for simulation to anticipate even trees, uh, even the landscape. It can be good for uh, modeling, terrain modeling. So it's a question of 3D. Uh, OK, thanks, uh, Philippe. Uh, so I think this was uh, the last question. Um, yes, we are actually close to 30, uh, so perfect on time. Um, I just uh, wanted to to thank uh, the speakers for the nice presentations and very relevant information. Also, apologies uh, to the participants uh, for the for these technical problems that we we had during the during the presentations. We expect to to have it uh, solved for the next uh, webinar. Uh, also, thank you for for your participation. Uh, I would like to show you in the next slide. Here is the presentation of tomorrow's uh, webinar. As uh, you may know, this is this webinars are a series of three webinars. We started uh, yesterday with one on, on PV sites, general uh, general concept, uh, general overview of the project. Today, more focus on the catalog of products, uh, and tomorrow will be this the webinar will focus on wind solar. Indeed, so so I I invite you to to also participate into this one. Uh, and then I would like to inform you that uh, the recording uh, of the session uh, and the slides will be available in the, in the project website. You have already the ones from yesterday. So just nothing else uh, from my side. Uh, thank you. I would like to thank you again for your participation. And uh, I hope to see you to see you tomorrow in the last in the last session. So thank you so much uh, and uh, have a nice have a nice day.